An e-mountain bike is one of the most versatile off-road machines out there. It can cope with smooth fire road tracks. It can take you to surface trail centers or big mountain adventures. But one thing you will need when you're out on those rides is some form of head and body protection. So let's go take a look at some of the options out there. Right, before we get started, there's three main questions that you need to ask yourself before you go buying that protection. First up is what type of riding do you do mostly? Secondly is how long do you go out on those rides for? And lastly, what type of climate do you ride in? So if your ride consists of something like this, just some smooth fire roads, well, you just need a basic helmet and a set of gloves. Trail riding doesn't require massive levels of protection either. A helmet, a decent set of gloves, and maybe some knee pads should see you set. But if gravity riding is more your style, well, you might want that little bit more protection. Think full face helmets, elbow and knee pads, back protection, and even ankle guards. But the important thing to remember from all of this is that each one of these items offer a different level of protection. So let's dive a little bit deeper. Now the kit that I talk about in today's video is going to be from our partners who are G-Form for protection and Bell for helmets. But all the information is going to be cross-relatable to all the other brands out there. And the brand that you choose to ride in is ultimately up to you. So let's get cracking and start with helmets. Now there's three different choices here. We have full face, open face, and those hybrid helmets too. Open face or trail helmets offer some great benefits to ride in. Things such as really good ventilation, you have great vision out there, and they're also very lightweight, and they're suitable for the majority of riders out there. Open face helmets will differ in the amount of protection on board and, of course, the features that are on offer too. Say, for instance, something like this Bell Sixer helmet that I've got on board here will differ from a more budget helmet such as the Bell Drifter. This one has a load more features and that's all reflected in its price. So some features to look out for on an open face helmet will be things such as an adjustable and replaceable peak, an inner ratchet system, goggle clips, and a MIP system, which is an added safety feature on some helmets. Full face helmets offer the utmost protection out there. Now these are great for riding at bike parks, enduro or downhill events. Now my Bell 49, offers masses of protection, is super lightweight, and as the name suggests, it's fully up to a big day out there riding in some really aggressive riding conditions. And in turn, this helmet is more suited to gravity style riding. If you were to ride this helmet uphill for a long time, well, it could get pretty hot, and it has less peripheral vision than that open face lid. Now, something you might want to consider is a hybrid helmet, such as this Super DH helmet from Bow. Now, this is a full face helmet, and a trail helmet all in one with that removable chin bar design, meaning you can clip it on and off. One day you can ride trails across country, the next day hit the bike park with that full face. Suitable for all disciplines. And lastly, don't forget that a full face helmet could be required to ride your local bike park or even enter at some races. Glasses and goggles are essential items when it comes to riding, particularly in winter if you're not running that front mudguard. Now the lenses that come on these, well that's going to vary from lenses that will help you see trail obstacles to some that offer a little bit more protection from that winter sun. Glasses tend not to steam up as easily as goggles can and most riders team up an open face with glasses and a full face with goggles, although either can be used depending on the amount of protection required. It's worth noting that glasses are probably better for e-mountain bike use and also for riding in those winter months. Upper body armor is definitely worth investing in if you're riding a lot of gravity style kind of riding or maybe just pushing your limits a little bit more. And it's also required at some e-mountain bike events too. Now this vest is gonna protect my back, my chest and my shoulders. And it's great to slip on underneath a riding jersey. It's gonna protect you from some really harsh impacts particularly if you were to fall in a rocky section, or maybe you've got a spare battery in your backpack. It's gonna give you that little bit more protection if things were to go wrong. However, it can be pretty hot to wear if you're going on a big day out, but that really depends on the route that you're riding. If you're pushing your limits on your e-mountain bike, or maybe getting into the gravity style of riding, something that you will need to protect is going to be your elbows with some decent elbow pads. Now these ones have a hard plastic outers, which is great for bike parks and gravity style riding. But if you're into just general trail riding, something like, like these lightweight options are gonna be your best bet. They're protected from more abrasions rather than those big rock impacts. So choose what you need wisely here. 
Gloves are some of the most important parts of protection to be wearing on your e-mountain bike and they come in lots of different designs and offer different levels of protection. And you can also get gloves that are designed for summer and winter use. The protection that a glove will offer will usually be in some form of knuckle protection on the outer, but the inner is the palm. Now these come in thick and thin palms and that's quite a personal thing, whether you prefer a thick palm or a thin palm to stay connected to your bike. Knee pads offer the greatest diversity in the terms of the level of protection that is offered by them. If you're into more hardcore riding, such as bike parks or hitting the downhill runs, then you're probably going to be wanting a knee pad just like this. Now this has a hard plastic outer cap on it, which is going to protect you from those rocks and roots. And it has a soft liner inside to cushion those blows too. But if you're into more like trail riding, then a lightweight flexible pad like this is going to be what you're looking for. It's lightweight, but it does offer protection that hardens on impact, meaning that you are protected from some of those bigger hits, but it remains flexible so you can put those miles in without that harder outer plastic cap. A chamois or a set of padded cycling shorts is probably some of the best protection you can get for using on your e-mountain bike because you're gonna be spending a lot of time sat in the saddle than you would do compared to a mountain bike. And with these shorts, you've even got some protection on the side of the short to protect your hip if you were to fall. And of course, that chamois. So you've got the best of both worlds, protection from your bum and your hips. And I think that's the key areas of e-mountain bike protection pretty much covered. But if you want to fine tune it to the next level, you can, of course, wear things such as shin pads if you're smacking your shins on the pedals, ankle guards if you're riding in those rocky conditions, and footwear is a massive subject too, whether you're a flat pedal or a clip pedal user, but you can get some benefits from using a cycling specific shoe, particularly if you're a flat pedal user. You've got a protective toe box on there, you've got padded areas on the inside of your shoes, and of course that sticky sole will all make the difference when it comes to hitting the trails. And finally, whilst armor and helmets will offer a certain degree of protection if you're riding in cold, wet conditions, and exposed mountain scenarios like we do on our e-mountain bikes, then good waterproofs that can keep out wind and rain are actually more valuable than armor in certain cases. Oh, and don't forget, it's also worth investing in some good skills and bike setup too. So there you go, a bunch of protection that's hopefully gonna keep you safe out on the trails, but don't forget, it's all about customizing what protection suits you for your style of riding. Let us know down in the comments about what kit you wear when you hit the trails. Are you a head to toe armor kind of guy or just a helmet and gloves and knee pads? Get involved, love to hear from you guys and girls. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to us here on EMBN and I'll see you out on the trails.